I'm Lauren. I'm Katie. And we're the creators of Get Messy. Get Messy is an art journey membership community with a focus on creating and connecting with other artists. It's both for beginners and experienced art journalists. This is our monthly interview series, Messy Conversations, where we talk to some of our favorite art journalers and have them share their talents, secrets, and inspiration with us. Through these conversations, we hope that you'll learn more about art journaling and are encouraged to find your own style by seeing all the differences in the artists that we interview. We especially hope that you are inspired to make something. If you would like to become a part of our community, go to GetMessyArtJournal.com or check us out on Instagram at Get Messy Art Journal. So let's chat. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Lauren. I'm Kaylee. And we're the creators of Get Messy. Uh, Get Messy is an art journaling membership program. And every week we share tutorials and inspiration and prompts. And we have this really awesome community. And it's all focused on art journaling. And this is where we share uh, interviews we do. So this is Get Messy Conversations. And um, so normally we have a guest on here that we interview and we learn all about their creative process and their art journaling. But we thought that this week it would be really cool if we shared about kind of about the roots of Get Messy and about our personal uh, journeys with art journaling and how we work and all those kind of things to give you a little bit more of behind the scenes and some more stuff about us. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we'll start telling you the story of how Get Messy um, began. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about how we met, I guess, would be the better place to start? Okay, well, we met when you sent me an email out of the blue, and I thought you were a total weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I think you asked me something about um, living in another country and all of that. Hey, that, that's when we met, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I have found your blog through um, Project Life Stuff. And so I had left you a comment, and then you left me a comment. And I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> she's, like, so nice. And so I sent you an email. And it was, like, the one of the first times I had ever emailed someone and, like, tried to befriend someone online because I was scared they, was, they, were, they would think I was a giant weirdo. <laughs> well, well, I did. <laughs> but it was so the first it's true time, like I had received an email like that as well so oh we say we each other's first <laughs> <laughs> um but now from that we are like legitimately real friends and we yeah. spent some a few weeks together in Germany this summer and our husbands are friends and so um yeah so I you know being well. weird pays off <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Okay, so that's that's how we met online, and so it's been almost three years now, I guess, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, I still remember exactly where I was. We, Kaylee and I were texting each other, and this is when I was, I was a hospital social worker back in the States, and I was on the cardiology floor uh, back in the nurse's station, and I was sitting at my computer working, and I was actually texting Kaylee. And we were talking about creativity and making things. And at that point, I was just, uh, we, were, we were both blogging. And I was scrapbooking. And I was doing more of, like, home DIY kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't really feel like I was creating anything new and anything of mine and, like, really finding my artistic style. Uh, and so we started talking about art journaling. Do you remember kind of where you were at that time? Yeah, I was also in the same place and I was um, the same thing was just doing scrapbooking and not really feeling like it looks like me and it looks like anything that's come out of like inside of me. It, it looks more like the products that I was using um, and I felt like I wasn't able to express myself and all that. And then there was the fact that um, I was a, an avid course collector. So the whole bunch of courses that I had and gone through nothing and I felt like you know like I wanted to be a certain type of artist and I wanted to be um doing things but I just wasn't and there was no reason that I wasn't doing them I mean I had the courses there and I had um every all the tools and I had the time I just didn't do it you know and then yeah. that's when I spoke to you about that about yeah. the like not doing but wanting to do and you know 
Yeah, so I, yes, I am definitely a course hoarder and still totally am because I love e-courses and they're so awesome and they're so affordable, um, but then I like flip through them and I'm like, oh, this looks great and then I never go back to them. So we talked about, you know, needing to use our courses and needing to like do something and, and for me, like in my head, an artist would always have a sketchbook, but I like had no idea what to put in a sketchbook because I don't like really draw so I was like I don't know what else to do uh, so a beautiful mess and Rachel Denbo from Smile and Wave mm -hmm. had come out with these art journal courses and so Kaylee and I bought them and so we agreed as I was sitting there in the hospital on the cardiology floor I, and we were texting and we agreed that we were going to work all the way through the course and we would be accountable to each other until so we would post um, two pages every week on our blogs, and so we did that. So, you know, we said, like, all right, next week we're going to post it. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And the fact, like, I did not want you to post, and I hadn't posted, and I did not want, like, to go, you know, like, it, there was so much, and I'm not, like, a, I'm not the type of person that needs accountability to get things done. It's usually within myself, but knowing that, you had your stuff there and you were growing and all that. Like it, it made me want to do it. And I didn't want to disappoint you. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wanted, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we decided to um, start sharing our art journal post, but we decided we needed it to be legit. So we just didn't want to share it. So we made a graphic. Uh, so I, it was like the first time I'd ever done this. I had like arranged all my supplies and took photo and uh, with like my digital camera and sent it to Kaylee uh, and because she's amazing at Photoshop and design and so she overlaid the LNC Get Messy <laughs> logo on there um, and so we shared in, um, for our first week and so this was just a project that we, she and I were going to do. We like never had any plans to like scale it or let it become anything. It was just for me and her to actually do something and hold each other accountable. Yeah. Um, and so then... Yeah. Then, like, we posted one week, our first week, mm -hmm. and Sabina, Sabina from uh, Berlin contacted us, and she was like, I want to join. And then we realized, okay, so the LNC get messy needs to, like, go away, like, after one week. And, yeah, then she joined us. And then, then it was get messy because, yeah. And then... It just like spiraled from there but like and more and more people were um feeling the same way that they also like wanted to actually do this art that they've always wanted to do and they wanted to like stop having a course just sitting on their computer or just sitting like on the internet waiting for them they they also wanted to do something and i think people also um they were they the fact that you just do whatever you do and you experiment and you play around uh, was very attractive to a lot of other people not just us and that was pretty cool yeah yeah it was and so we were all creating around the prompts from this class uh, so it was we were already seeing how valuable prompts were and how everyone made something completely different uh, and so we have some of our like very first pages that we made uh, and I remember I made it still one of my favorite pages from this day. We'll have to pop the picture up because my art journals are back in America. Um, but and then and so I loved the page and it was like a um, like a map as a background and I like included oh, I paint chips that. and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and so it was really fun and I really liked that one and I feel like it was you know, one of those pages that I created with, like, out any expectations or limitations, you know, it's like when a kid creates, like, they just make it because they just like to, you know, it's not because they think about, like, people are going to see it or anything like that, um, and then I, my, so the two pages I made that week, I had actually woven my paper strips together because, the word, the prompt had nothing to do with weaving, but the word weave was in the prompt. And so, and that sparked that idea oh, yeah. for me. And so I think like, even like to this day, one, one thing I tell people about prompts all the time is that they're not to be taken literally. Um, you can if you want to, but like think about little words and little things in there. They're, they're going to spark something else for you. And so I think that's when I started using prompts that way as, as a, 
spark for an idea. Yeah, I also think that the the cool thing with the prompts, um, with that course, there were uh, a few different prompts. So if I wasn't feeling the one, I'd just go on to the next one and see if maybe that resonated with me. And then it was weird because I'd come back to prompts and all of a sudden, like, I just knew exactly what I wanted to do. Whereas when I saw it, maybe like three weeks before, I had no idea. That was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you have some of your first pages. Yeah, Let's I've see those. My, mm, I've got my first ones here. This book is like falling apart. But this is my first... I, think, I don't know if it, I don't even know if this was like the actual first one, but this was one of the first like five or so. Ugh, it's falling apart. And you can see like back in the day, back in the day, I really liked um, uh, magazine clippings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the way I did it is I, I'd, I had I felt so much pressure to like do it um, in order with the journal, so I used to like skip around. So I'm busy trying to find another first one yeah so I'd skip around in it and you were journaling a lot too in that one yeah it was a weird it was yeah a lot of magazine pages like you can see like there we go a lot of magazine oh, yeah. pages there's quite I mean that's a lot of journaling for me <laughs> yeah yeah um playing around meeting old book pages which is just like the ultimate yeah there was yeah. a very like distinct i think style in this journal oh yeah there definitely is and it's falling apart yeah yeah my favorite I remember... yeah my favorite thing about this art journal is that i wanted to make like a really artsy cover so i put like paint on and i just like stuffed up this entire thing and that was like what art journaling is about for me it was like letting go and letting things be messy and horrible and that's fine and that's actually quite pretty yeah i know i re remember you being so upset about that <laughs> um and i remember when we both first like posted our blog post i had made like my two pages and kaylee had made like 20 um yeah, and that, so you were yeah that was like because my style is like so um i needed to be quick and like in and out and you were so like intricate and detailed and thoughtful <laughs> um okay so so now we have all of these people posting with us so like every like thursday we are posting our pages and we're, we're doing like all these link ups and all of these like blog hops but it gets to the point where there's like 50 people and so we can't do a blog hop with like 50 people so yeah. kaylee makes a page on her blog with like links to everybody and immediately what we notice is happening is that people are like really taking the time to like click through all the links and like comment and um, like really encourage each other. And so I think that is kind of the foundation of Get Messy was it was about, you know, consistently creating every every week, sharing those online and then encouraging each other and building community. Mm -hmm. And, and so those are still, like, the foundations and the most important part of yeah. of the Get Messy program. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, and then when was it? There was a time where we um, decided that we needed a little bit of direction. And then we brought in the yes. prompts. That was early on, yeah. It was. It was. I think people were asking um, because I think what happened was we didn't want to share the course content that we had bought. You know, we didn't want to, like, publish that online because that wasn't fair to the people who had written the course. Um, and a lot of people didn't have the course, and maybe they had even re they retired the course for a bit. And so we, we wanted to see a way to, like, share one prompt so that everyone was creating the same, off the same idea and to see all the differences. And so we started sharing a prompt once a month and then hosting a link up all on our blogs. Yeah. And... Yeah, and so that was super amazing and super cool to see all the differences in what people were making, but from the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think from there, it just kept, like, naturally progressing. Like, we started a Facebook group where we all, like, would chat about art journaling and share and encourage each other. Um, and it just it grew and it grew and it grew, and there were hundreds of people in it at this point. 
and we realized that it was becoming such a big deal. It was becoming a lot of work on both of us, and so we needed to find a way to make it more of a legitimate thing and helpful. We wanted it to be really helpful for people to like learn how to art journal, learn how to do different things, um, and so that's how the first uh, or I guess the second round of Get Messy was born where Kaylee built us this beautiful website and we um, charged just a little bit of money uh, for people to become a member. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was good about that, I mean, like, um, before it was really confusing, like, whose blog are we looking at this week? Like, I don't know what to do. And I think that just like streamlined it and made it so it was all in one place and it was a bit more easy for people. You know, like there's so many barriers to creating. I mean, um, you don't need more. So that kind of took more of them away. Yeah, yeah. And, and it really made it be more of a focused resource for people yeah. because people, a lot of people were asking like, how do we get started? What do I do? How do I do this? Um, and so it was just kind of a natural progression. Um, so we worked for almost a year just as like the free open community that um, was just completely open. And so then after that year, we turned it into the first um, version, I guess, of Get Messy. And then just this past year, beginning of 2015 um, or 2016, I can't remember what year it is. It's 2016. Um, <laughs> So the beginning of 2016, um, we went through a whole another rebrand to make it even more of a, um, like we just want this to be like the ultimate resource for people to, to just learn about art journaling and to learn about all different things that you can do. Yeah, exactly. Because there's, I mean, there isn't anything out there. Like we couldn't find anything. We had to make it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, like I said, we've just always focused on those, like, three major core values of, you know, consistency, sharing, and community. Yeah. Um, and it's been so beneficial. I mean, we, like I said, this, this, a, a year ago, um, we traveled through Europe, and the whole time we just stayed with people I had met through Get Messy and, mm -hmm. and online. And so we've made, like, real and friendships no and met real you. people. Yeah, and I didn't get murdered. Um, it was great. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of the Get Messy story and, and how we got here. Um, and I I think, and so it's been three years, almost three years that we've been doing this. And this is probably the longest I have ever stuck with anything, any oh. any art form. Me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like because it's so, such an open art form, it's like always evolving. And like every day I'm finding something new that I can try or that I want to do. Um, and it just influences so many other areas that it's just like a natural extension. You know, it kind of ebbs and flows into other things. Yeah, exactly. Like in art, the art journal is like kind of the place where you can make all of your mistakes and if you don't like something so what you turn the page you know i mean it's not going to change anything like um with scrapbooking it's very fixed and very um rigid and they have a certain like unwritten rules but with art journaling you just feel so free and you feel um i mean sometimes that can be intimidating as well though but I think that's where that's where it's nuts nice with like the prompts and the community. Like you've got a little bit of direction if you want it, and you can interpret it um, how you want and to fit in with your life. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and I think that people say like, "Oh, when you say there are no rules, that's that's too much for me." And it's not that there are no rules; they're, they're not. But it's it's more about just giving yourself forgiveness and ah, yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so that that's more of what I mean when I say there are no rules is, you know, you can mess up and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah you just, know. Yeah, you need to do, you need to do something the first time because I'm super perfectionist and it's annoying because I'm not perfect, obviously. But um, after you've done like, I don't know, 10 pages or whatever. If you keep doing it, you keep doing it, then your perfectionism goes away pretty quickly because 
yeah you realize you can't be yeah oh yeah I know I feel like I have gone through some terrible pages yeah Mm -hmm. um and some pages that you know aren't terrible but just aren't me you know they're pages that I just didn't like um and so until I've kind of find found a style but I still feel like my style evolves every you know get messy does seasons and so sometimes I feel like my style even evolves with those seasons yeah because show us some pages okay um let's see let's go back to the oldest one that I have currently with me um so I just have this black notebook I got from like Michael's um and it doesn't have a title page I don't really have title pages in my books Mm -hmm. it's something I always say I'm going to get back to um yeah. Oh, this is this is an old page that I made from a prompt t- tutorial from like the very beginning. So it was all about layers, um, and so that's what that one is from. This is still one of my most favorite pages mine ever. Too. Oh my gosh, mine too. Yeah. So oh. yeah, I think that's I just... when your like style started. You know. Yeah, I know it's when I really started using like watercolor and like painting my own backgrounds. Um, and I've always like you'll see like all of my pages have um, photos in them. Like I love both of these pages, um, and so I think that really started from my scrapbooking background. And so now as my stuff has progressed, I don't think I have any pages in the past two two books that I have Um, but okay so that is that book and then I started doing loose leaf pages where I started um, painting a ton and so you can really see that reflected here Um, oh I took this book apart Uh, so I love this page and so um, and I think uh, one of, an artist who I really love is Ashley Goldberg, and she has a really great great class called Paint Plan Play, maybe something Paint like Plan that. Plays, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, and so I feel like a lot of my style kind of came out of that too, learning about mark making and different types of um, painting techniques. And so, uh, and then we had the season of words where we did an altered book Um, and so one thing I really personally struggle with is my handwriting and because it's really bad and so um, I use art journaling as a way to experiment with different types of writing and getting more comfortable with my um, handwriting and things and finding workarounds you know because this is a stamp and so it still gets the words on there, but they're like perfect, uh, and so I don't have to worry about about messing messing those up. Mm. Um, but I think, and this is my my last one. This is the current book that I'm working in, and I think this is um, my favorite my favorite pages I've ever ever made. Um, and so I think, yeah. And so this year I'm working through. Uh, making a working in my art journal every single day and so it's my habit this year that I'm trying to build and it's just been amazing so I used to because I'm a huge procrastinator um, and this is one of my favorite pages Mm. I would wait until the night before that my pages were due and I would um, make them super fast and super uninspired but I would have to make something um, and so now I am um, working in my journal every day, and so I'm like slowly adding pieces in. So I'll, you know, just put in a background, and then I'll lay a couple, like cut out a few things for a magazine. And I feel like the difference for me in that slow, ongoing creative process has really helped me make. Um, page is more meaningful and um, I don't know just there's so much more like depth and thought to them and I and I love the pages so much more 
Yeah. Yeah, you definitely, I think you definitely like, um, you can see a difference from an objective standpoint, like between your previous pages and between and the ones now. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing because they both look like you. I mean, it's not like a style difference. It's just Lauren depth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see some of your pages. Okay, let's do all that. Um, okay, so this was this is the first one. This is brown. Mm -hmm. This is like my least favorite. Like it's too big. I don't like the size. Um, I prefer the smaller one. So I really like um the size small skin so mm. yeah this size or or the a5 size um and i think like these ones are a lot less pressure for me because i can finish it quickly and it you know like that's it so and you can see it's amazing because all my different um journals show such like different styles it's like this is this type of style that I had here. Um, and where it's really minimalist and like not really words or like one word or um, no journaling, still a lot of magazine pages. Um, so like you're more of a series maker. I think it is that, yeah. Um, like really simple so that would be that journal then then I went through a stage where I just wanted to do like abstracts um, um, just like that and this was just like I didn't want to do these in my book because I thought that they would be really bad so I just put them on card and I think I scanned them in onto my computer afterwards so um, those are gorgeous I love those <laughs> they were inspired by you Lauren like that is the only reason I did them and I thought I was gonna like I did not want to put in a journal because I did not want it to be permanent um, here's like when we did the season of words did it in an art, uh, altered journal altered book and I quite like that one so it's mm -hmm. nice because then there's like a base for my pages and I don't really use a lot of paint um, mm -hmm. so that's good for me then it doesn't look completely empty um, then I'd like this one again I don't know why these like brown books keep coming to me when I don't like them um, <laughs> yeah so then this was also like one of my early ones I think September 2014 um, some things are like really uninteresting let me over show you like this kind of thing and you can see like each journal i can tell exactly where i was in my life you know like i can remember the exact feelings i can um yeah so yes i feel like you are the you are the best at minimalist pages but with like maximalist depth and meaning well you just put a swear word on and then like that's how you do that that's all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote a lot of journaling, but there's just like one oh, yeah. sentence repeated. I think that was when my mom um, went for her oncologist scan after she had her appointment. Anyway, this that's a rough book emotionally. <laughs> and then like now I'm doing like all like mm -hmm. watercolors and I'm like, I think my style now I don't really like, but it's because I'm doing more um, experimenting and trying new things out. So I don't think like it's useless um but yeah like i'm trying different mediums and i'm trying to actually use words and journal and write my thoughts and sometimes those thoughts are not great and sometimes what i paint is not great but that's okay because it's yeah yeah <laughs> but i think that's what's important and that's how we evolve and we change as artists because we kind of find our style and we sit in it for a little while but then we get that itch and we feel like we need to to grow and evolve more and so then we try the new things but it's uncomfortable 
yeah. when we're doing something new and unknown and we don't know if that's going to be our new thing or not. Um, and that's something that, you know, art journaling gives you the perfect um, medium to do that in. Yeah, like all these new things that I'm trying now, like I'm totally uncomfortable. I really don't like it the end result but I really like doing it and I think it's different to like my beginning when um the process wasn't really therapeutic or it was just like getting things out and that was nice and then I liked the end result and now it's more about the process so it's interesting yeah. how we go on these like journeys and seasons with our journey yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah um let's talk about inspiration because I was you you mentioned this and um, this last page that I showed uh, was totally uh, inspired and, and I feel like looks totally like you. Um, but yeah, then we, <laughs> so we have these pages of each other um, and of so many different people like in the group. Um, so share about how you find inspiration in, in the group. Okay. So I do not, I'm like, I strongly do not believe in inspiration. I hate that word. But, I mean, there's no other word for it. I don't think that it's inspiration unless you actually do something about it. So, like, looking at pretty things and scrolling through Instagram hashtags is not inspiration. Like, looking at someone's thing and being like, I need to make a right now, that's inspiration. So, okay. Yeah. So, what, like, what's really inspiring, like, if I can't think of anything that I want to do or anything that's going to come, like, if I don't have the need, which I usually always do, um, then I'll scroll through um, the Instagram hashtag or the get messy Pinterest boards and I'll look and I'll see um, I'll use some kind of like um, visual prompts I suppose um, mm -hmm. and see if there's anything from there that I want to try or if someone's style appeals to me then I'll look at their pages and I'll try and figure out exactly what it is about it like with your stuff I know like you are so good at um, abstract art and um so I'll, like i went through all your abstract art pictures and i'll like see okay so you like have a like smear like that and then i'll try and do it and then eventually it like ends up looking like my type of like you know it doesn't look like yours it looks like mine and that's pretty cool i don't know what yeah. about you yeah no i feel like i do the same thing and i'm always big on copying and so that's like always one thing i tell new people is like find something you like and copy it yeah. you know and it'll never turn out exactly the same and even if it does it's fine it's not like you're going to turn around and try and sell it and say that it was yours it's just you have to you have to start somewhere you know and that's how um, i'm an elementary school counselor so you know i know a lot about spend a lot of time with small children but that's how we teach kids like we literally we model things for them and then they repeat it back after us and that's how we're taught to learn as children so that's totally okay for you to try and copy something that I'm doing um, because you'll eventually figure out if you like that if you don't and, and how to make it your own and so I do a lot of the same thing is I find something I like and so I'll say okay you know I really like the color palette she used or I really like, you know, that you did like a book as your page background. And so I'll start building from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, I, yeah, I feel like it always, it just kind of evolves. Like once I start putting things down on paper, it'll kind of take its own direction. But it's just the thing that gets me started moving. It's like one yes. element that I see in a, in a page. Yeah, I think um, sometimes the hardest thing to do is just to start so like no matter what you yeah. get to get you starting is good like it's, it's cool yeah mm. yeah yeah and so and that's what one thing I love about get messy and that's and I think that's one thing for me that I think of as like a good artist is someone who you can easily emulate you know, like Essie, who's on our creative team, who we did an interview with she is amazing yeah. and we talked about this in her interview is that her stuff is so good and it's so her like I can never copy it exactly but I love her stuff because I can look at it and I can immediately turn around and make something based off of it yeah. because it's still simple enough that it's something that I can do and and so and I think that's what you're talking about with inspiration like yeah. that's really inspiring yeah. that's true inspiration yeah oh, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so what would you tell a brand new person to art journaling? To just do it. To 
to mm-hmm. set a time every single day at or like once a week but like on a repeated timeline that you're gonna sit down and you're just gonna do whatever you can anything just do something mm-hmm. that's it yep and you yep um i think i think we just said a lot of things but i think one additional thing is i would challenge yourself mm-hmm. so like only pick three things so like you're gonna use a book page paint and a quote yes. you know and so there's that limits you but it but it doesn't because there's so many things you could do with that um yeah yeah and that you'll find that having those limitations will give you a lot more freedom than you think it will yeah. and so that way you're not overwhelmed with everything in your stash exactly and when you can't think of like something to make that's what the prompts are there for you know yeah to help you yeah. to help you like get a starting point and even if it's not exactly the prompt, then you've got some way to start thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are always a great thing. And whenever I am, like, completely at a wall and stuck, I will try and literally do a prompt. Yeah. So I will, like, take it as literal as I can until I can eventually get the ball rolling enough that I can produce something. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, it was good to talk to you again, Lauren. I know. <laughs> You're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I hope you guys found this informative and helpful and fun. And know that we are on social media and we are always in the Facebook group and available by email and all those kind of things. If you ever need help or have questions or just want to chat, mm-hmm. um, and that's what we're here for. And so we just want to see as many people as we can fall in love with art journaling and reap the benefits the way that we have. Um, and I think, like, these, all these paintings behind me, I would have never done this three years ago. I would have never had a full wall of paintings that I had done um, had I not started art, art journaling and learning different types of things. And so there are so many amazing things about art journaling that can come. Um, so we are at Get Messy Art Journal, um, and we hope to see you there. So join us next time for another Get Messy conversation. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>